was not a challenge, but a request from the trade justice movement um, for us to link trade justice to tax justice issues. Um, and, and we took a bananas as, a, as an, a case study. Um, and the reason we took bananas as a case study, well, there are three reasons. First of all, because under American accounting rules, companies have to disclose much more accounting information than they do under European or Australian accounting rules. So we have access to much better information. It just happens that the three dominant, it, it, it is a monopolistic market, um, the dominant players are all American, Dole, Chiquita and Del Monte are the key three dominant international traders in this market and therefore we had access to very good information. That was number one reason. Number two reason is of course Bananas are totemic in the fair trade movement. Uh, and number three reason is because I helped set up the structure when I was working in Jersey, so I had inside knowledge. Um, for those of you who want to look at this, this case study at length, you can just Google tax justice goes bananas, uh, and that will take you through to a, the links through to the Guardian story. The Guardian newspaper ran this as the longest article they've ever published. It was a full front page and two full entire entirely full, no advertising, internal pages. Um, the Guardian newspaper has been a great ally to this, to this network uh, for a long time. Um, and what this case study does is it looks at how bananas are traded out of, uh, out of Latin America, which is, of course, the main producer center for bananas traded into Europe. And it takes one pound's worth, sorry, I've been stuck with one pound here, one pound's worth of bananas bought by the retailer at point of sale in the United Kingdom. And it breaks it down across the chain, the trading chain within the multinational company itself. It shows how they used offshore structures to book their profits. Now the profits here are super normal profits because we're dealing here with monopolies and they're clearly restrictive practices very difficult market to break into. Um, and uh, the profits are quite simply enormous. But the trade in practice out of Latin America, um, the export prices of that one pound's worth of bananas you're buying in London, what's left behind it is in Latin America is 13 pence. One and a half pence of labor costs and 10 pence, 10 and a half pence of production costs one pence of tax on profits, which might be taxed at rate of, let's say, 30%, so you might have 0 0.3 cents of tax or pence of tax left in the producer nation. With me so far? Mm -hmm. So the journey physically by boat is all very wonderful, but the actual the journey on paper is much more exciting because they're then booked by the producer, the subsidiary in the producer country, onto a subsidiary in the Cayman Islands, where they charge eight pence for the use of the purchasing there. That's an intellectual property right. Then on to Luxembourg, where the further eight pence is charged for the use of financial services across the internal network, this one company. On to Ireland, where a four pence charge is imposed for the use of the brand. On to the Isle of Man, four pence is charged for the use of insurance services. On to my home island, this is where I came in, six pence is charged for the use of management services. Again, that's an intellectual property, right? Uh, Bermuda, where Sonkin 17 pence is charged with use of the distribution network. Again, this is a, an intellectual property, right? And then on to the invoice, on to the end retailer plan and up to the consumer. So if you look at your one pound's worth of bananas, you'll find that approximately half of it is, in fact, intellectual property rights parked offshore. You're not buying a piece of fruit, you're buying a very complex uh, set of offshore structures. Um, and what they've done is they've packaged their, their uh, super monopolistic profits into tax havens where they will be largely be untaxed. And because of American, the American system, that, that, that super monopolistic profit does not become taxable at all in America until it is repatriated to America. If anyone who knows American profits, Every time there's a presidential election, there's pressure to, or tax amnesty to bring those massive pools of cash sitting offshore 
onshore at a preferential rate. At the moment, they're pushing the 5.2% tax rate on those onshore profits, um, because that's going to create jobs in America. Of course, it does no such thing. It's simply it's spread out through to, to, to shareholders. But that's what's going on at the moment. They're pushing very hard, heavily for a tax break to repatriate these profits. What applies to bananas applies to virtually every single trade good commodity of science across the world. And what you're seeing here is a complete failure of the global rules on transfer pricing. Because transfer pricing simply cannot get its head around the uh, intellectual property right issue. So the big game for lawyers is to package value as intellectual property rights, royalties, payments, papers, and so on, and then shift them offshore. And that's what drives a great deal of sort of private equity investment, almost all of which comes from offshore. What they're doing is they're buying up companies, taking out their intellectual property rights, parking them offshore, and that's asset stripping them generally, um, because that way they can massively increase share value by reducing the tax charge. Make sense to you? That's, that's the dynamic behind the private equity model. Okay, so this is, this is just one case study amongst others. If you want to look at a really, really elegant and sweet little case study, ActionAid produced a fantastic study of a <coughs> growing company, a giant called SAB Miller. Um, and that, that case study, which came from last year, uh, looked at their Ghanaian brewery um, and found out that the sweet little lady called Martha, I think, uh, who runs a, a tiny little cafe, pavement kiosk, outside the, the gates of the biggest brewery in West Africa, pays more tax than the brewery itself. Mm. Shocking. Mm. Shocking. They've just bought fosters. Exactly. That's why I raised this example. Mm. Okay, I'm going to stop there and have questions.